G'day, welcome to the program. I'm David Lipson. Another tragedy at sea and simmering tensions over asylum seeker policy will frame Tony Abbott's first trip overseas as Prime Minister. He's headed to Jakarta on Monday to meet with the Indonesian President Susilo Bangbang Yudhoyono and no doubt the boat's issue will overshadow his preferred focus on trade and security. Joining me now to discuss this and the rest of the day's issues, the Finance Minister, Senator Matthias Cormann, thanks for your time today. Good to be here. This tragedy at sea surely is a, a terrible milestone, the first deaths at sea under the coalition government. Uh, it is always uh, terribly distressing when people die at sea in these sorts of circumstances, which of course uh, is uh, why it is so important uh, that we stop the boats. Uh, because while the boats keep coming, sadly, uh, people uh, will continue to die. And of course, uh, now we do have uh, Operation uh, Sovereign Borders underway. We are working uh, very constructively with the Indonesian government. Uh, and, and of course, uh, you know, it's very important that our efforts uh, together with the Indonesian government uh, are going to be successful. Uh, we understand that there's also been two other rescues by Australians in the last 48 hours or so. One of them saw asylum seekers returned to Indonesia and the other we understand there are attempts to have the asylum seekers returned to Indonesia. Now I appreciate that this is not your portfolio area and it is a sensitive issue as well but are you aware of any hardening on that stance because uh, even though this was available under the previous government it only happened once uh, look i mean you, you're right this is not my area of portfolio responsibility and scott morrison as the minister for immigration uh, will of course be providing uh, a proper and detailed uh, briefing as part of uh, operation sovereign borders at the appropriate time uh, i mean suffice to say uh, it, it is very important that we stop the boats uh, in order to achieve that uh, it is very important that we continue to work constructively and positively uh, with uh, Indonesian authorities and, and the Indonesian government and we will continue to do that from uh, the highest levels of the government down. Uh, but is that, uh, is that really happening? Because uh, this week we saw that extraordinary step of the release of the account of a private meeting between Julie Bishop and Marty Natalagawa on Monday in New York. Uh, now that was released to the media, what is normally, m normally private. It was later sort of retracted as, as a mistake. It was said to be never intended for uh, a, a press release. Uh, but does this simmering tension, you'd have to say, threaten to sideline some of the, the issues that Tony Abbott wants to fo focus on, like, like trade with Indonesia? Uh, well, I, I can assure you that we are having a very positive and very constructive engagement uh, with the Indonesian government uh, in relation uh, to uh, the important issue of uh, needing to stop the boats. But of course, uh, it is also true to say uh, that clearly, uh, while this is an important issue, it should not be uh, the defining uh, issue of our relationship with China, uh, with Indonesia. Uh, our relationship with Indonesia is uh, clearly uh, one of the most important relationships we have as a nation and, and there are many, many uh, uh, facets to it and of course uh, the Prime Minister uh, will, have, uh, will uh, visit Indonesia very soon. So you're confident that the focus can remain on, on trade and, and, and on other issues? You don't believe that the boats issue will overshadow? Uh, I'm confident that while this is one issue uh, that of course uh, we have to continue to deal with constructively, uh, that uh, all of the other very important parts of the relationship, in particular uh, our trade relationship of course, uh, will uh, be appropriately, uh, ho appropriately high profile. OK, well look on budget matters. Uh, we saw the, the news conference yesterday uh, by you and, and the Treasurer Joe Hockey uh, where you really confirmed uh, the, the PFO numbers for the year 2012-2013. Uh, Joe Hockey, though, yesterday said that the budget was deteriorating further since then. He wouldn't say by how much. It wasn't a big deterioration, but a deterioration nonetheless. Uh, will the Coalition consider selling assets like Australia Post to bring the budget back into line? Well, uh, firstly, I mean, when the pre-election economic and fiscal outlook uh, was released in August, the 2012-13 financial year for which we released the final budget outcome yesterday was, of course, uh, already 
uh, finished. So uh, you wouldn't have expected there to be much of a difference in relation to the 2012-13 financial year. Mm. The point I would make, though, uh, is that uh, what the final budget outcome did show is was that there was a massive deterioration uh, from the uh, original 12-13 budget, which promised a $1.5 billion surplus, uh, to the final budget outcome, which showed an $18.8 .8 billion deficit. And of course, that's been the story under Labor. It's been a story of deteriorating budget positions. I yeah, mean, but we, there's we no knew doubt. that, as you, as you said, we knew that before the election and, and during the election well, it was confirmed. Well, we, we knew before the election and we pointed out before the election that Labor made a mess of the budget. I mean, when Labor uh, won government in 2007, they inherited a position with a $20 billion surplus, uh, with no government net debt, uh, with uh, $50 billion worth of uh, uh, cash in the bank, uh, collecting more than $1 billion in net interest payments. Fast forward to 2013, and of course the position that we've inherited is a $30 billion deficit this year and growing, uh, $200 billion worth of government net debt and growing, a uh, growth that go heading for $300 billion and beyond. Uh, so so uh, will you sell off assets to bring it back into line then? Well, the, the government has got a policy uh, to sell Medibank private and we'll do that uh, at the right time following proper uh, methodical process. Uh, we, we are not going Australia to speculate. Post? We have a policy to sell Medibank private. That's it. Uh, I, I'm not going to speculate about any other uh, potential uh, decisions down the track as, uh, as uh, was uh, uh, done in the media today. As far as we're concerned, uh, the, sole, the can, sole policy can you rule that it we out, have though? in terms of... Can you of, rule it out for us now? Well, uh, again... We have a policy to sell Medibank private. We don't have any plans whatsoever to sell any other uh, assets. Now, uh, the Commission of Audit uh, will start its work soon. The Commission of Audit, uh, its job will be to ensure that the operations of government are as efficient and as cost effective as possible, that taxpayers uh, get uh, maximum value uh, for, their, for their money. Uh, and, uh, you know, once we receive the report from the Commission of Audit, uh, not wanting to preempt what it may or may not recommend. But once we receive the report from the Commission of Audit, we'll consider whatever recommendations they put to the government and we'll take action in the appropriate way at that time. You've flagged raising the debt ceiling when Parliament returns before the end of this year. Can you say how much you will raise it by? Well, we have to uh, raise the debt ceiling as a result of uh, the mess uh, Labor made uh, with the budget. I mean, the, the truth of the matter is that Labor really should have raised the debt ceiling uh, before the election was called. They knew this because uh, when the budget was released in May, Treasury officials told me in Senate estimates then uh, that the uh, level of gross debt was expected to reach $290 billion uh, by December this year. Uh, since then, of course, just for this financial year, the budget position has deteriorated by a, a further $12 billion under the previous government, uh, which, uh, you know, you don't have to be Einstein to add that up. That is $302 billion. The current uh, debt ceiling is $300 billion. So, I mean, at this stage, uh, we are on track as a result of Labor's budget mismanagement uh, to reach uh, the $300 billion debt cap uh, by Christmas. So, uh, mm. obviously, uh, we will need to uh, make some... Uh, decisions here. Yes, we will have to uh, lift the debt ceiling and we'll be going through a methodical structural process in order to make uh, the decision exactly by how much that will be. Uh, I'm not going to make an announcement here today, uh, but we will, be, we will continue to consider all of the relevant advice from uh, Treasury officials and others. Uh, and uh, when we've got something to announce, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you. OK, and just finally, overnight, the IPCC has released uh, another report on climate change, which uh, really outlines that it's even more certain than ever that humans are, are causing the climate to change uh, at, at dangerous levels, if the projections are right. Uh, it, it really underlines the need for, for a global deal. Is direct action the right policy to, to, to sort of point us towards a global deal? Or was an ETS, which you've promised to get rid of, um, more, more likely to see some sort of global action? Well, firstly, uh, we are not questioning the science. What we have questioned uh, is, uh, and what we have said, is that we should not be hurting uh, our economy without doing anything uh, to reduce emissions, uh, which is what the uh, carbon tax and before uh, the CPRS uh, would have done, and which the carbon tax is now still doing. I mean, you've got to remember the carbon tax 
uh, is, uh, pushes up the cost of electricity, which pushes up the cost of living, but also pushes up the cost of doing business uh, here in Australia, making environmentally more efficient businesses in Australia less competitive uh, than uh, more polluting businesses in other parts of the world. So arguably, not only does it shift emissions to other parts of the world, it actually leads to increased emissions in other parts of the world. So, uh, I mean, the, the carbon tax is, uh, is, uh, is a policy under Labor and the Greens uh, which impose sacrifices on families and pensioners and, and business here in Australia without actually doing anything to reduce emissions. Whereas direct action and our emissions reduction fund actually will, leads, uh, will lead to effective emissions reductions uh, in Australia, which also then translate uh, into effective reductions, uh, net reductions in emissions globally. Mm. Okay, Matthias Coleman, the Finance Minister, thanks so much for your time this morning. Always good to be here. After the break